Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Seven Habits of Highly Effective Teens virtual series. My name is Regine Murchison. I am the program coordinator at the Wade Edwards Foundation and Learning Lab, and I am also your host for this virtual series. Tonight, we will be discussing habit number six, synergy, and our presenters will be Sheila Reich and Paul Brown. Now, before we get started, um, I just wanna remind you guys of a few things, the same things I remind you guys of every night. Um, so one thing, I wanna tell you about the virtual series. So we've been running this series from August 3rd to August 6th, so that was last week, Monday through Thursday, and now we're running it this week from August 10th to August 12th. So yes, that means that these are our last two sessions together, but that is okay because we have recorded every single session, and sometime after the series, about a week after the series posts, we will let you all know when it posts to our social media so that you can engage in it, keep engaging in it, keep asking questions. And of course, we'll keep answering them in the comment sections within our social media. So in case you missed anything, don't worry, we recorded it for you. And the first, the second thing is that I want to remind you guys before we get started with the series that some of our presentations are pre recorded. That means that we are depending heavily on technology and heavily for it to work. But of course, when you really need something to work, sometimes that's when it just does not want to work for you. So if for any reason something's skipping, you can't hear me or anything like that, please know that we are working really hard behind the scenes to get everything situated. Please extend grace and patience to us as we fix everything that we need to fix. The second thing is about the chat box. We would love for you all to engage in the chat box. You can ask questions, you can hold conversations, you can share experiences, but we would like you to engage in a respectful and polite way. And in order to keep it that way, we have three moderators on tonight, Jacob Bridges, Kristen Junji, and Khalid Scott. And so if you have any issues, if there's anything going on that's making you uncomfortable, you can private message any one of those three people. They have the words moderator right next to their name in parentheses. And the last thing, of course, is to have fun. You have allotted 30 minutes of your evening to this content. So really engage, really dig in, ask questions, share experiences. This is a safe space for learning. Um, and we really just want to hear from you in the chat box. Um, and when the time comes, we want you guys to keep your, your videos on mute for now. But when the time comes, you can take your, um, your video off mute and you can ask questions to the presenters as we've been doing every night. So before we get started, I want Paul Brown to introduce himself. He's going to say his name and um, where he works and kind of what he does for a living. So, Paul, are you with us? Yep, I'm here. <laughs> he said what I do for a living is funny. So, so, <laughs> so um, yeah, uh, my name is Paul Brown. I'm with Youth Thrive. My uh, title here is Director of Operations. Uh, so, of course, you know, Youth Thrive itself, we kind of work uh, more so with youth serving professionals. So the people that actually work hands on with the young people, we try to support them in any way we can, whether it be, um, you know, that, that, that assistance when it comes to training or, or resources they may need or, you know, data, anything that may kind of help them push forward um, their goals that they want to achieve with their young people. Uh, but me in particular with the director of operations, I'm kind of more so like the backbone, the logistics person. Whenever we have events, I kind of make sure we have everything in place. Uh, prior to COVID, it was, you know, venue space and, you know, food and registration and things like that. A couple of weeks ago, we had another event where we had to purchase, you know, some gift cards and stuff to kind of reward the kids that actually were involved with the program that we partnered with. So uh, that's, that's me in a nutshell and what I do for a living. <laughs> Well, thank you, Paul Brown, for sharing. Um, so I guess without further ado, we are going to show the presentation that Youth Thrive has provided for us. Of course, during the presentation, you can ask any questions that you want. And Paul is here tonight. So that means that you can ask him questions and he will be happy to answer them. So without further ado, here's habit number six, Synergy. Hello everyone, my name is Sheila Reich and I am the Executive Director of Youth Thrive. I am so excited to connect with you all about Synergy, which is habit number six. Have you ever heard the saying that two heads are better than one? Or maybe you've heard the African proverb, 
If you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. These sayings really reflect the principle of synergy. So what is synergy? So let's talk a little bit about the definition. Synergy is achieved when two or more people work together to create something better than either could alone. When you're thinking about the habit of synergy, what it means is that something doesn't have to be your way or my way, but rather when we work together and we collaborate, it can be an, a higher way. Synergy also allows us to value differences and better appreciate others. So when we think about the importance of synergy, there are lots of lessons around this important principle all around us. And actually, we see a lot of them in nature. So now we're going to shift a bit and show a video about geese, because who knew it? But there's a lesson from geese that we can learn about synergy. You asked us, why do geese fly in a V formation? You see, flying takes a lot of energy, flapping wings, generating lift. Now, all this flapping creates an updraft in the air currents around the bird's wingtips. Another bird can spend less energy by flying in this sweet spot, which is slightly behind and above the first bird. The concept is similar to cyclists riding behind one another in a bike race to save energy. For geese, spending less energy means flying longer distances. In fact, one study found they can increase their range by 70% on long migratory flights. When the lead bird gets tired, it just drops back in formation and another bird moves to the front. Flying in the V formation also lets the birds keep visual contact with one another so they're oriented in the right direction. That way, they don't crash into each other or get lost along the way. For more stories like this, check us out every day at smithsonian.com. So I hope that video just shared a little bit about the thinking and demonstrates the value of what can be learned when we work together. And we'll also talk a little bit about why it's important to value differences when we're thinking about synergy. So being open-minded and listening to others with different experiences, views, and opinions can lead to better problem solving. People come from different points of view, different cultural perspectives. People have different lived experiences. And when we share those things, we can often refine the way we identify or articulate a problem and also the way in which we want to solve that problem. So when you're thinking about how to synergize and put this principle into action, when we're thinking about how to be highly effective, there is a synergy action plan. And so what that looks like is when we're defining the problem, make sure that we truly understand the problem or the task at hand. Think about what it means from their way. So what are our colleagues, our friends, the other students, thinking about how they decide this problem looks. Try to understand everyone's ideas, listen carefully, and seek to be understood. Share your ideas. So again, this is not either their way or my way, but it's a combination. Brainstorming is also an important part of a synergy action plan. You can be creative and everyone gets to bring their new ideas to the table. And we can all just make sure that everyone has an opportunity to be heard and to put their ideas forward. And then at the conclusion of our action plan, we think about what's the highway? What is the way that we want to address a problem or a task or action that involves all of our best thinking that we've put forward and shows the spirit of collaboration? So that's what we think about when we think about synergy and thinking about how to put this principle into action. So let's do it. Let's become much more effective in our work by incorporating it. And I think this is going to be something helpful for all of us to be mindful of all the time. Thank you so much. Thank you for that presentation, you thrive. Uh, so Paul, here comes the questions. Um, a lot of good nuggets to take back with us. But my first question is, how do you apply, apply this habit in your everyday life? Uh, I think for myself, um, it can be a part of your personal life as well as your professional life. 
uh, personally, I've always enjoyed kind of being by myself. I was the only child for a while. But one of the things I re realized growing up was that uh, synergizing, I guess, and working with others kind of takes you a lot further. One of the quotes that Sheila used during this PowerPoint presentation is, is correct. I know my grandmother told me too when I was younger, she was just like, you know, you may be able to do a lot on your own and, you know, money could take you but so far, but when you work with people and you treat people a certain way, it can take you a lot further. So I think even in my current position now, we work with a lot of different organizations, but I mean, I even go back in years when I worked with other organizations in South Carolina, we did the same thing. You know, a lot of times United Way would bring us together, we would work and you know, where I came up short in my position or my program, I had another organization that would kind of help us out and vice versa. So, you know, someone down in Columbia, South Carolina may, you know, need help uh, doing the homeless count. And, and for us, we would step in and kind of assist them. And then on the back end, you know, we would want to go do some workshops on the other side of town and it would assist us as well too. So um, I realized that like, there's nothing you can kind of do in this world alone for too long. I think at some point, everybody kind of has to work and, and play to other strengths a lot of times in their professional lives, so. So true, so mm -hmm. true. Thanks for sharing, Paul. Before I ask Paul the final question that I have, I do wanna go back a little bit to the chat. Um, one of the questions that I asked was, what do you guys think about synergy and do you work better alone or with others? Um, and so, um, Jennifer, if it's okay with you, I'm just going to share what you wrote. Um, but Jennifer says, I like to work alone just so that I can focus, but I can do better work with others. And retweet. I, I relate to that so much. Is there anyone else who wants to share um, about synergy and whether or not they work better alone or with others? <laughs> Kristen says it depends on the task. Yes, that is very true. Yes. What did oh okay? And Joey says I like to work on my own. I can get more done. Okay, Joey. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, did you want to add something? Yeah, I was going to agree with Joey. I think for me, it works better for me to work on my own. But when I think about the overall task or the overall goal. I kind of work better on my own kind of starting out and then I can kind of bring what I've done to the table and then from there we can move forward. But sometimes, you know, some people just kind of have like an order or a structure of how they do things. You know, they kind of like to knock stuff off on a checklist and I think it's kind of harder for me to kind of bring a person in at that point. But once I have everything done on my end, then I can bring someone else in. So I agree with Joey. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, we have someone that says, when I assign tasks to others, I feel I can do it better. So I end up doing everything myself. Okay. Yes to that. So I think this is perf a perfect place for me to be vulnerable. Um, I'm, I understand that, but in the opposite way. So I always, I'm always feeling like, um, so I do like working with others, but I, I, I don't like to feel inadequate. And so uh, the whole time I'm hoping like, I hope this helps the group. I hope this helps the team. I hope this helps our mission. And it only ends up driving me, you know, a little, a little bonkers. Um, and so I relate, but on the opposite, on the opposite end of that. So thank you for sharing. Um, and Ruth says, but having a great team can be amazing. Yes, Ruth, it's all about who you're working with and that's what um that's what Sheila was talking about right um it's all about who you're working with and what you're willing to give in the space and what other people are willing to receive which is kind of like what we talked about yesterday with habit number five um okay Joey says again okay Joey if I'm working on my own because then it will not be so distracting yes it can but it depends on who you're working with yeah so we got that Thank you so much for sharing everybody. Really appreciate it. Okay, I can't, I can't let this last one slip. I also like working alone, but when you need others to have buy-in to an idea, they'll need to feel involved along the way. That is so great. Thank you for that advice. So before we end everything, I have one more question for Paul. And guys, if you have any questions, do not let me end this thing without asking Paul these questions. Um, but my last question for him is, what advice do you have for teens who struggle to synergize or who struggle with working well with others? Um, the advice part is probably hard, but I think it's more so like a reality check of, you know, regardless if we're talking about in, in the workforce or we're talking about just trying to navigate through life, you know, if you're trying to go to college, you're trying to go straight into the workforce, you're trying to, you know, go from middle school to high school, whatever it is that you're trying to do, I think you have to realize that you're going to have to work with other people. I know you guys mentioned 
um, uh, not being able to do it all on your own. And that's the quickest way to get burned out. You know, it, nobody, nobody has to answer for everything. Nobody knows how to do everything. So I think at some point you're going to have to work with someone that may just be better than you at something in, in order for you to kind of move to the next level. So going from, you know, middle school to high school, going from high school to college or, or college to work or whatever it is that you're trying to do, I think it's, it's best for you to kind of swallow that pill of doing it on your own and realize that you're just going to keep burning yourself out at every level. And you don't want to be tired at 25. <laughs> you don't want to, you don't want to be, you don't want to be, you know, completely tapped out at 25 years old because you've kind of put the, the weight on your shoulders are trying to do everything on, on, on your own. So that would be my suggestion is, is kind of swallowing that pill and, and just saying that I'm going to need people at some point. There's nothing, there's no successful entrepreneur, billionaire, millionaire that's done it on their own. They realized that they had to find people that was able to kind of bring their dream or their vision to life. So. Well, thank you so much, Paul. Thank you so much for that reality check. At some point or another, we are going to have to work with someone else yeah. and working together. Honestly, it, produces a better it ends up with a better product every single time um when you do it well when you yeah. do it the way that Sheila said in the, in the presentation <laughs> but yeah so that is perfect um thank you so much guys for coming to tonight's um series tonight's session of course we have one more night which is pretty bittersweet um we have enjoyed each and every one of you. If you guys, for any reason, um, want to know more about The Well, here's the time where we just do our shameless plug. You can email me. Um, my email is rmurchison at wade.org. Um, you can also visit www.wade.org if you want to see more content. And of course, always be on the lookout for this particular content that we have recorded over the past week and a half. Thank you so much, guys, for joining us. Thank you, You Thrive, for this presentation and for these reality checks we really need. <laughs> them. And I am so excited to see you guys tomorrow for our very last habit, habit number seven, sharpen the saw. See you guys tomorrow. Have a good night. Good night. Good night.